Hi everyone, welcome. It's Ryan here from the London Craftsman channel. Today's video is all about this uh, grinder stand. This one here is from Banggood. Um, it's pretty cheap and hopefully it's going to speed up the process of me cutting down handrails to length and not have to set up a, another chop saw or another machine. It's pretty small, can store it away nice and easily and yeah, I thought I'd give it a go. And that's what this video is all about, just um, showing you how I set it up and showing you um, how it cuts. Yeah, so if you are interested, stay tuned, watch to the end, and I hope you enjoy. So this one won't be a long one. We'll go straight to the point. Basically, I'm trying to cut hanging rails to length. I don't really want to have a big chop saw lying around all the time. This one's set up in the workshop. It's a sight saw and uh, a workshop saw. Whenever we need it, we'll use it. Um, we've also got a chop saw in our ultimate workbench. It's not been used for a while, um, but it's on a lift. So it just pumps up and it comes out the top. But it's a little bit overkill for what we need. We need, well, I need, shall I say, I need a really quick and easy way of just chopping these down nice and easily. I know they're going to be creating sparks, so I'll do it outside. Just do outside the entrance to the workshop. So that is not a problem at all. But I wanted something quick and easy, um, cheap, and um, something I can store away in a cupboard. I thought this would be the perfect um, tool to test. I was flicking through Banggood and I saw it and I've never seen these before. Um, so I thought I'd just give it a go. It was pretty tricky to set up, okay? So the instructions are absolutely pants. I mean, it must have been drawn, this, well, the sketch must have been drawn by like a one-year-old. But I managed to do it. If anybody is struggling, just give me a shout. Um, basically, this section here um, had to be screwed down with these two screws. So you just remove these two screws and um, bolt this piece down. You've got these two L brackets here. This is an L bracket. And there's one over on the other side as well. Okay. So they get screwed in to the side with these Allen key bolts. Okay. That holds them on. And then every grinder has two bolt holes either side for a handle. So when you look at your grinder, you can position your um, handle on one side or the reverse side. So that allows for a bolt to go in. And this is why these are, um, well, I think this is why this actually works because we've got a sturdy fixing point for them. Um, I did, um, it was a little bit floppy um, until I did put this top bolt and bottom bolt in it and sort of really um, fixed it into position. But these won't make it absolutely solid if I, I spring it down. I've used another nut on either side of the L bracket to nip that bolt into position. And then you've got these two bolts, top and bottom, if you have a look. They've got a little tab that just pushes up against the saw. So you basically just nip them up and push, put the pressure towards that end of the saw. So you just keep turning until it's pushing the grinder across. And the same here as well. I don't know if I can get that in a shot. There we go. We've got exactly the same one there too. So it pivots on this one and the reverse side. It's exactly the same, those brackets. And then just to stop it pivoting, you push this one out and this one out until you've got it square or yeah, until you've got it square. This is adjustable here, so I've only just rigged this up, this fence, and it can do, it's got a little curve in it, so you can do angle cuts too. Only literally just set it up, and yeah, it's nice and tight now, it's nice and tight on the brackets. You may have to have a play around with the pivot, pivot point as well, take it up as much slack as you can. It's got a nice, decent spring on it, and um, it does stop, the, the grinder itself hits the clamp, so it just pushes down and stops there. This is how it works, you pull it down, it's got a decent spring on it, you can see the spring at the back, and it's a nice heavy duty spring. Um, and as you push it down, this part of the grinder hits the clamp, and that is a good stopper actually, because when you pull it down, the wheel or the disc goes below um, the surface, which means it's going to cut through your material. So it acts like a stopper, which is perfect. Have a look at the back. You can see the curved piece of metal, and that is perfect to holding on your guard. It's a little bit rickety. Obviously, this isn't a festal um, cut-off saw or anything like that, where there is quality showing through. 
putt. Um, I think it's going to do the job perfectly. Just double check that the pivot hasn't got any play on it because it can wobble side to side if that's loose, but you tighten that up too much and then the spring doesn't work because you've just nipped it up too tight. But it's working on my old Makita grinder. It's an old one, it's a little bit grubby, um, but it works perfectly. Um, yeah, I think we are good to go. Um, what I am trying to do is cut these hanging rails, they're 25 mil in diameter. I'm sure this will cut anything else, whatever a grinder will go through, but I'm simply just gonna put that in there nip it up and um, yeah that's nice and sturdy so I'm happy with that that's going to be good enough I'm going to get my goggles set up outside and give it a test run and that's how it's going to cut it might not be 100% square at the moment I may need to tweak these okay but I'm not going to do that right now it's only just showing you if this will cut um, through hanging rails and um, see if it's worth I'm using or keeping in the workshop and to see if it's worth it for you guys to see um, if you want to buy one yourself there's always a time isn't there where you need to cut bits of metal down like angle um, or channel or something like that um, and like I said this can do 45 degrees by the looks of it so it's a, it's a safe enough way without using a chop saw with a chop saw you're gonna need the right blades I generally use trend for my chop saws or well a decent woodworking saw blade for my chop saws and I don't feel like I want to change that blade every time I want to cut like I said that's mainly for timber and stuff around the workshop and on site so yeah I think um, if this works I'll be pretty happy I suppose it's all down to um, how quickly it cuts and how well and um, if, is it a faff to use etc etc so if you're liking my content guys we're at 41 and a half thousand subscribers now we're gr growing quite quickly so if you like my content and or you've learned something feel free to subscribe to the channel. Cheers. So I've got my goggles on. I've set up the saw outside and basically we're going to go out there just to see what the cuts are like and to see how this machine performs. So fingers crossed it works well and we can, we can use it and it's not a waste of money. Let's check it out. So here we go, a bit of a mess out here, but we've got it set up. Just got a little barrier at the back. If I do end up using this, then I will make a little dedicated area or a box or something to go around the back to catch the sparks. Obviously, you don't want to be doing this in the workshop because it sparks, sparks and dust equals fire, obviously. So, yeah, not a good idea. Um, also, wear your goggles. Don't forget, all right? Don't take shortcuts and go, oh, it's only one cut because that's when, because that's when you can lose your sight. And, yeah, not pretty. So, yeah, we've got our hanging rail in there. It's nice and firm. I've tested it. It's absolutely fine. I'm going to set up the camera and make a few cuts. Okay, so this is the first cut I've done with it. I haven't tested it at all. Anything goes wrong, it'll be on camera. Let's give it a go. Hey! How awesome is that? Yeah, it's got sparks and it's not a chop saw, it's a cut off saw, so there's going to be sparks flying around. But it's not square whatsoever, I need to set that up, but it's pretty crisp and it's straight. When you're grinding these by hand and you're cutting through by hand, you know, you can get bends in it and then the blade starts binding halfway through sometimes. Um, yeah, let me see if we can get close up. So there we go, there's the cut. Pretty good, I think, overall. If I could find a place to set this up or even just come out and just have a little box or something to catch the sparks, because I've got power outside, I just literally plug it in, then I can just cut these hanging rails to length um, without having a dedicated area in the workshop because, yeah, I don't want a whole chop saw lying around um, just to cut metal. I don't do enough of it, this is the only metal I cut. Um, but overall, it's pretty awesome. Should we go ahead and do one more cut? Okay, I've rigged up the camera as best as I can. Let's see if I can get a shot of it. Obviously, I wouldn't do this um, in any other circumstance. It's a bit cramped out here, and I just want to get a good shot of it. I don't want to be cutting in the workshop, otherwise I'd have a lot more space. But yeah, let's go ahead for the cut.
Yeah, there's a little bit of tweaking to do. I need to tweak how far down this chop saw goes. It's just about going, but I have got a blade that is old, so it could have another centimeter or two on it. Um, also, I'm holding it by the grinder. It feels more natural to hold it by the grinder. So you have got a handle here. So yeah, let's go and move that and do one more cut. Let's see if um, I get any better results by holding it with the handle. Hey. Wow. I'm super impressed with that, let's be honest. Um, with a handle, it felt a lot more natural. It just felt like holding a chop saw um, or a dedicated saw meant for it. Okay, so we're not getting um, crisp. Well, I haven't gone far enough. But there's a lot of tweaks to do. But overall, I think I'm impressed. I will be using this compared to my old style. Yeah, there's a few bits to tweak, but I think we can make it work. So yeah, back in the workshop now and surprised how well that actually worked. It went through pretty quickly. I didn't have to put much pressure on it. It was an old blade, so I could swap that over. And when I do swap it over, then it's definitely going to cut through the hanging rail pretty easily. Sorry about the hole in the ceiling. We'll get that fixed pretty soon. Um, but overall, it's only a 45 pound machine. I'm going to leave a link in the description for you guys if you want something like this yourself. Other than that, you're going to have to go out and buy yourself a dedicated cutoff saw. And I think there are a lot more than this. If you've got a grinder lying around, I'm sure everyone's got a 115 mil grinder, then you just plonk it in this. It's only going to cost you 45 pounds. I think that's what it was. It was $56 at time of filming, plus you get free shipping, or it's only a dollar. Can't remember. Overall, you've got yourself a decent metal saw that will cut through lots of bits like threaded rods, um, angle, channel, lots of bits and pieces, aluminium, steel, just by modifying your chop saw. Pretty chuffed. I am chuffed. And this is it in close up. Overall, um, the instructions were absolutely rubbish. But if you look at every component, um, I'm not trying to justify anything here. I'm just looking at um, the pieces, like the clamps. Yeah, it's good enough. There's nothing cheap. It's, it works. It holds the piece down. The plate is thick, solid metal. All the screws and bolts used are big and chunky and hefty and doing the job. You've got a nice, um, chunky spring at the back. It's well designed. It's designed to make the grinder be held completely in position without moving like it did. It's got a position for the guard, and um, it's got a tough handle. Overall, you know, for something that is budget, and remember this isn't a festal machine, it's cheap, it's cheerful, and it does the job. And that is what I wanted to show you. It is a little bit different, okay, so when you're looking at the picture here, the plate's a little bit different, this part. Um, and I was trying to look at it and go, how do we work it? Because the instructions weren't telling me anything. But with a little bit of my guidance, I think like you've seen at the beginning of the video, you will get it rigged up. Yeah, overall, awesome. Really, really chuffed. I think I'm going to start using that. Just need to make a little box at the back to catch the sparks. And then I could just shove it outside every time I want to use it. It's not an everyday tool. It's like a once in a week tool where I can do all my cuts in one hit, 10 minutes. But that's it. So I hope you enjoyed. Have a great Sunday. I'll see you next Sunday. Take it easy. Ciao for now.